everything is from components. This is actually a guy from something that we're working on here called the Reaper Wraith. This complex 3D object, uh, if you look at him here, on the inspector, he's got an animator, a capsule collider, a rigid body, he's got some scripts on there, uh, things for navigation. So everything comes to life through these components. So let's look at what a game object is, uh, what some components on it are, and hopefully that'll kind of fit together a little bit more here. Okay. Let's go back to Unity. And I'm going to create a new scene here, because remember, we can have many, many scenes in our project. Like I said before, scenes are the equivalent of levels. Scenes are the equivalent of levels. Some folks actually have multiple levels built into uh, one scene. Right. You can do that. Uh, I typically break them apart by one scene equals one level. Yes. My title screen will be one scene. Level one is a scene. Level two is a scene. Yep. Typically named like that, too. So here I'm back to an empty scene. On the game object menu, I'm going to create an empty one. So I have an empty game object. Notice right here these properties. On my inspector, I have a name, a tag, which is just some text to assign to the object. Mm -hmm. And you might be saying, Adam, why would I assign text to an yeah, object? Yeah, why would I? It sounds like I'm overcomplicating <laughs> things right now. Because typically in Unity, when you ask the system to find another object, yes. maybe you're a zombie looking for the main player. You okay. typically don't ask for an object by name. You can. You can say gameObject.find and give it a name of an object. Sounds like uh, it might be kind of expensive if I have a lot of things in my scene. It's expensive, and some scenes have thousands of objects. Yeah. Um, so searching by, and also game names can change. So if you're trying to do gameObject.find on a name, yeah. if you have a cloned zombie, maybe you're creating at runtime multiple instances, okay. his name is no longer zombie. It's zombie parenthesis clone. Ah, so it sounds like they're like, uh, doing that in incrementing numbers perhaps as well. So it's, you don't want to do it by name. Right. Unless you know that the name won't change. Yep. Uh, so the other thing is here, using a tag. You can add your own tags. Unity really gives you a few built-in ones. If I want to add my own, I say it's an array, so I have to kind of size it out here. This could be zombie. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I want to find my uh, gravestone, as we might be doing. Grave, not strong. <laughs> gravestone, as we might be doing later on today. When I go back to that game object, or any game object, I now can see that that's there. Okay. So game object, we have name, tag, a layer, and a transform. Transform is basically the most important property inside of Unity. This I would agree. Where your position is, so notice as I'm moving this guy around, my position's updating. Uh, the rotation of this and its scale. Now these equate to these buttons on the toolbar here. So this is position. This little widget here, I'm moving my position by that icon. Mm -hmm. And notice I can click on the center here and move it around, approximating 3D space, because I'm working in 2D space, but it's approximating 3D space. Yeah. Or I can do it by direction, by clicking on the arrow tip. And this is what I do 99% of the time. I use the arrow tips to kind of just ge really gently place my objects where I want them here. Yeah. This one here is rotate, and now it turns into, we get these uh, spherical lines here that we can click on a line and rotate a game object. Okay. And then this last one is scale, if we want to scale it out. So if I create, uh, let's go back and create a cube, which is a game object. Looks like you can scale on each axis as well. There you can we go, go like that, scale it out there, or I can just then scale it. Now, caution, scaling at runtime can be an expensive operation. Sometimes yeah. you need to do it, but typically you want to make sure your assets are scaled coming into this. Okay. All right, so now our components here are what brings us to life. This is an empty game object. Notice we have these properties right here. Every other component will have, every other game object will have these same game object properties, okay. plus a bunch of components added to it here. So my camera has a camera component, a GUI layer, audio listener, flare layer. My cube has a box collider. We'll talk uh, about that in very, very shortly. It's like you're adding more functionality here as we're going Adding along. more functionality. If you're a uh, developer, if you ever heard of the decorator pattern where things kind of add on. Yes. Similar, although this is kind of a, a visual aspect of it. If I want to add codons here, we'll look at that very shortly. We're going to use these components as well, too. So again, save early, save often. Control S or file, save scene. So we want to call this, after I get my caps lock off, level one. Okay. Next, let's talk about prefabs and packages. This is how we reuse things inside of Unity. Absolutely. In the Unity interface, we can have uh, we can create our zombie. Okay. If we want that zombie to go outside of our game, and we, or we want to use it in multiple levels, we have to create it in some redistributable way. Right. Uh, we might have downloaded it from the asset store. In that case, it's already in a distributable package. Okay. Uh, but we're going to show you how to create those right now. 
Okay. Ready? So reuse is essentially what we're using, what we're trying to sell here. Reuse. Prefabs allow reuse across your scenes. Okay. Uh, also within your scene, so you might have that zombie you want to duplicate a bunch of times within your scene. The advantage of using a prefab is if you update that root prefab, mm -hmm. everything else that was formed from that prefab gets updated. Perfect. So make a change to perhaps its speed or its health size. Yep. Affect all. As long as you click that prefab object, everything else gets updated. Perfect. And now Unity Packages is a separate concept. That's actually a .Unity package file as opposed okay. to a .prefab file. When you download something from the asset store, it mm. actually gets cached on your system locally in a folder uh, as a .Unity package file. You can click on them. I have a whole folder of them that I use uh, for reuse on my project. You double click on them and it imports in Unity. Sounds Just like it's going to save you a lot of time. Tons of time. Tons of time. So let's look at a quick demo of prefabs and packages. Perfect. Let's find... Let's open this old city again here. Okay. Because this would be a good example of how you'll find some content gets distributed to you. Let me zoom back here a little bit more. Yeah. So if I look in the destroyed city, here's a prefab folder. And if I click on this, notice it says something.prefab here. I click on that prefab, drag it into my scene. So I can now reuse it. Let's just say on this building, uh, maybe I want the sound of wind coming from just this building or all my buildings, some audio source. I can add an audio source here. Right. Now, I added it here, not to my prefab down here. I added it in my scene. So there's two ways this workflow can go. If I look at my scene's prefab right now, it doesn't show my audio component. Right. So I can actually push from my scene back down to this guy, which in turn will update all of my other buildings here. Okay. So if I click on another building, there's no audio component. If I click on this building, it's right there. So let me click on Apply. It's now pushing it down here and it should have pushed it back out to every other one that stems from it. As long as your character gets closer to these buildings, you can start to hear the sound effect and noise coming out of this. Yep. As, so now as I click all these other buildings, notice there's an audio source on them. Yeah, you must have 20 or 30 buildings there, so it Lots sounds like you buildings. saved you a lot of time. Absolutely. Uh, especially when you realize you made a mistake and yes. you need to correct it. So let's, let's create really a simple one so you can see. We'll do a new scene. Don't save that. I'm going to create, let's do a cube and an empty game object. Let's duplicate that cube a couple times. Move this guy over. We've got two cubes. I'm going to rename this game object to Awesome. Can't type today. Awesome Cubes. Okay, so game object is the uh, default name for any of these. Game object is the default name. You got it. So I can take these cubes and I can do one thing called parent them. So I can drag them in here. Okay. They become a child of that. Now that means that any time that I basically move this parent object, the children follow. You see them both there kind of following with it. Mm -hmm. Now I say these are the best cubes of all time. I want to reuse these all over the place. So very to, fine color. <laughs> very, very fine cubes. So if I take these cubes and I click on them, notice they're white or kind of this grayish color. We'll call it white text. If I click on them and drag them down, let me create a folder here called prefabs, just so we can be a little more organized. Create folder. Prefabs. Go into that folder. And now let's take this guy right here from my hierarchy okay. and just simply drag it down. I'm going to drag it down here, drop it. Notice this color turns blue. That's telling oh. you this is a prefab. This has a shared instance somewhere. Awesomecubes.prefab. Now I can drag this awesomecubes.prefab all over my scene. Yeah. Looks like they even took a little snapshot for you, too. If I, yeah. Kind of see these little guys here. If I expand that, I can see these children that they contain. Okay. Maybe on one of those cubes, I want to add, just like we did before, an audio source. So I added just an audio source to this guy here. Not in my scene yet, but look what's already happened. You see these little speaker icons? Yeah. All of them now have that audio source on them. Audio source. So it looks like you have the option of editing all of the prefabs, or if you want, just one at a time. Yep, absolutely. Now, if I so if I want just this one here to have... Uh, I don't know, audio cords. Let's, do, let's actually do a rigid body because we'll be looking at that next. If I do a rigid body on this one, because I did it in my scene here, it's not going to apply to anything else, which is exactly what I want. I just want this one to have it, nothing else. So the rest of them don't have them, just this one. If I want the rest of them to have them, click on apply. It gets pushed down to this guy and then back into my scene. So all the rest of them should now have the rigid body component, and they do. Looks good. Very, very easy. All right. So architecture on Unity is 
something that I think everybody needs to understand, how this fits together. Inside of Unity, we have a couple major components. We have the editor. Uh, we have MonoDevelop, which is the built-in code editor. It's a cross-platform code editor. Uh, it's not made by Unity. It's another third-party company. Yes. And um, that's used. You can actually download that and play with that as a whole separate product. And it has a game engine built into it. In the editors, we saw we can test right inside of there. You can extend it through scripts. It's a very powerful way of developing your game. The project structure, we look at the folder on disk very briefly. In there, we have the assets. That's always a top-level folder you see in Unity. Okay. Everything you bring in your project goes in there or a subfolder thereof. Seems simple enough. Yep. Now, all the other folders, library, project settings, and temp, that's for stuff that Unity does. Uh, if you don't know exactly what's in there, don't mess with it. <laughs> right. Probably best to leave it alone. I list there on the screen if you're interested in knowing what Unity does with that, but uh, it is best to leave them alone. Okay. Compilation. Well, we're running code, so something has to get compiled. Right. Uh, we're doing objects who can have code on them, so behind the scenes, something happens. Mono is always used in Unity to compile your scripts. Now, compilation in Unity might be different than your final build. Okay. So Unity is using Mono. Maybe if you're going to Windows Store, your final compilation will be uh, actually .NET. Right. So just know that Mono is what's used to compile the scripts. Uh, Unity licenses a version of Mono, and so that's what they maintain and use for the editor. Okay. You export a Visual Studio project, like I said, for something like Windows Store, that could be generated by .NET. If you're doing a desktop build, it could be generated by Mono. So there's different ways uh, that, that can be used inside of Unity. Okay. Compilation varies per platform. Yes. Multiple levels of compilation. In the editor, Mono, 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 as I mentioned. Seems simple enough. When you then export your project from Unity, as Jason will show you guys later on today, how to bring your game to the, win uh, the Windows, those game assemblies are then generated by different, it's either mono or .NET, varying cases. Okay. Then in turn, let's say you compile your Visual Studio project, uh, or if it's a Windows standalone build, Unity will actually compile that for you. And that's generated then by potentially another one. So there's different passes that happen here. Okay. Sometimes it's important to understand which because there are different API. Windows Store supports a different API right. than, uh, say, desktop builds. So it sounds example. like some pretty low-level stuff, but do you think it's worth uh, very beginners to, to spend time on this, or is this kind of once to get further down the road, maybe investigate some time? It's, uh, it's good to spend time on it when you do your first build, because <laughs> yes. that's typically when you're going to get bit by it. So speaking of build and, and compiling everything in code, let's talk about code. Okay. Uh, Game loops are per game objects. So in Unity, you have this concept, and actually in game development, of mm -hmm. a game loop. That's where everything happens. Uh, the C Sharp that's supported, since we're going to talk about C Sharp today in Unity, supports pretty much most of all the major constructs you'd be used to in developing with C Sharp. Okay. Uh, you can do link, lambdas, anonymous methods, uh, events, etc. Do you have to code? Uh, some folks watching today might not be coders. Right. Uh, I definitely recommend it. I think it's great for everybody to learn code, but not yes. everybody codes. You don't have to. There are other third-party plugins for the Asset Store. Uh, Playmaker, Be uh, Behave, Rain AI is a free one. Yep. So um, Playmaker and Behave are, are paid products. Uh, and they're kind of visual scripting trees, so you don't have to code to be able to use them. Right. And I think it's one of the, the big selling points for Unity itself is that it's uh, not as intimidating to a lot of developers out there because uh, it's so appealing to, to artists and designers as a whole. Yes, absolutely. Unity has two physics engines that they use. Uh, okay. One, they've licensed the physics engine from uh, NVIDIA, which is used by a bunch of companies. So is it any good? Well, Unreal's using it, Unity's using it, Game Real Vision, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of folks using it. That's right. And a lot of folks today may have heard of Box 2D. Mm -hmm. I know we've all heard of it going into before we even knew about uh, what was going on with Unity, actually. And that is used for the 2D engine inside of Unity, and a bunch of other companies are using that as well. And 2D physics are typically faster than 3D because you are... One less plane to calculate. One less plane to calculate. You got it. All right, so let's look real quick at coding, physics, and particles. And actually, as we go to Unity here, I do realize there was one quick thing that I left out last time. Okay. I mentioned I would also talk about exporting packages. You've created your prefab. You realize this is awesome. You want to reuse it or sell it or give it to someone else. You just simply right-click and export package. Okay. There you go. This will export package into a .unity package file. We'll put it on my desktop where everything goes. Call awesome. And now people can use this in their other projects as well. Now you can use it in your other projects. You can just double click on it. It will import right in your project. Perfect. Of course, I already have it in this project, so we don't see anything. For this code demo, we're going to, let's do, we've got all sorts of cool options here. We're going to do this guy here. So code in Unity. Let's create a new scene again. Okay. We'll call that level two for the last one. Simple enough. I like it. We're going to create another cube. It's a real easy base primitive to work with. If I want to create code in here, 
I like to create a new folder, and I call that folder scripts. I do the same thing. You don't have to, you can drop it like I did here. <laughs> but it's good to stay organized. Good to stay organized. Right click, create 